Well, beloved, it's another Lord's Day, and we greet you in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, the one who ever lives to make intercession for us. Uh, what a joy it is to come to your homes again. Welcome to the Fresh Bread Broadcast. I'm your host, Pastor C.D. Middleton of the Bethlehem Baptist Church here in Middleton, Tennessee. And we just come and share this word this morning and suggest open up your understanding to the word. Uh, we started back in-person worship the first Sunday, May of 2021, and we ran all the way to December. And January 1, the virus, the Omicron virus and the Delta variant and the COVID-19 virus started to surge and rage. So myself, along with the leadership of the church, thought it best if we would take precautionary measures to suspend in-person worship again. And so now we find ourselves back on social media, back across the airways, uh, to bring to you the Word of God. I don't care how bad the situation gets, you can never set the Word out. Amen. And so also, it's with heavy hearts that we announce to you that we lost our brother Zachary Davis this week. Uh, so I want you to, I'm soliciting your prayers to be in prayer for the Davis family, Sister Tanya and the children, and Marilyn Pitts, and all those that will connect to Zachary. We just ask you to just pray fervently for that family, that the Lord will strengthen them during this difficult time. Amen. Well, uh, I want to go into the Word. I want to. I don't want to waste precious air time, but I want to take my time and just share this Word. Uh, too many times and so off I just rush through the word. I don't, I don't want to rush through the word. I want to just uh, be a blessing, take my time, and share this word with you. If you have your Bibles, go with me to the Gospel according to John, chapter 5. And the reading is, is a little lengthy this morning, but just uh, bear with me, hang with me, and there's a revelation in the passage. John chapter 5. Now I want to read this account of Jesus healing this man that had been uh, infirm for 38 long years. Here it is. After this, there was the feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem by the seat mark of the pool which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, a blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first after the troubling of the water, stepped in, was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. And a certain man was there which had an infirmity 38 years. When Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been a long time in that case, he said unto him, Will thou be made whole? He asked him a question. Do you want to be made whole? The immature man answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another stepping down before me. Jesus said unto him, Rise. Take up your bed and walk. And immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. The Jews therefore said unto him that was cured, It is the Sabbath day. It is not lawful for thee to carry thy bed. Hallelujah. He answered them, He that made me whole, 
the same said unto me, Take up thy bed and walk. Then asked they him, What man is that which said unto thee, Take up thy bed and walk? And he that was healed wished not who it was. For Jesus had conveyed himself away, a multitude being in that place. After Jesus found him in the temple, he said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come unto thee. Let's pray. Father, we come this morning to thank you for grace and thank you for mercy. We thank you for our Lord Jesus Christ who loves us and gave his very life for us. God, as you have assigned my hands to share your word, I pray for the anointing to be rich in me and in my life. Fill me again with your Holy Spirit. And I'm confident the word will go forth and won't return back Lord, to you. Draw now by your power. No man can come to you except he first be drawn. So draw with your drawing power. Draw center to Christ. Draw backsliders back to Christ. And draw the body of Christ back to your presence. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Will thou be made whole? I want to talk about this morning. Do you want to be made whole? Do you want to be made whole? Do you want to be made whole? Beloved, Jesus asked the question, do you want to be made whole? Whole comes from the adjective hygienist, from which we get our word hygiene is translated whole. The word means healthy or well. The best temporary contemporary translation of Jesus' question here is, do you want to get well. And in my sanctified imagination, I can hear the Lord saying, do you want to be made well? I I was uh, I was in Walgreens. You know Walgreens, that pharmaceutical giant. I was in Walgreens the other day. And Walgreens has an advertisement slogan that simply says, be well. They specialize in pharmaceuticals and medicinal drugs. Almost anything that ails you, they have a drug that will heal you or relieve your pain. I wish I had a witness. But as good as they are, they can't heal everything. It's just some stuff that only the Lord Jesus Christ can heal. Yes, Walgreens pales in comparison to Jesus Christ. He's still Jehovah Rapha, the God that heals us. Hebrews 13 and 8 says, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's still in the healing business. The old saints said it like this. He has more medicine in the hem of his garment than all of the drugstores in America. Hallelujah. So Walgreens has medicine for headache, but only Jesus can cure a heartache. Yes, Walgreens has medicine to cure your appetite. But only Jesus can give you an appetite. Walgreens can give you medicine for irregular heartbeat. But only the Lord can make a heartbeat. 
He's still a heart fixer and a mind regulator. Yes, the pharmacist can give you meds for your mind, but only Jesus Christ can give you a peace of mind. Isaiah 26 and 3, he will keep you in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. My, my brother, my sister, with sickness, disease, and death running rampant through the land, yes, COVID-19, and almost two years of this thing, we're still talking about COVID-19. The Omicron variant, the Delta variant, influenza, pneumonia, cancer, and such like, I want to announce to you this morning that Jesus still has the power over death, disease, and sickness. I wish I had a witness right there. I said, Jesus Christ still has the power over death, over disease, and over all sickness. The question is, do you want to be made well? And I've discovered that everybody don't want to be well. Some folk are comfortable in their predicament. They've been in that place so long so they are calm, they are become comfortable, cool, and complacent in their predicament. It's the norm to them. They are immune and resistant to change. So the question is, do you want to be made well? You may not want it. I, I, I may be barking up the wrong proverbial tree. This man in the text had an infirmity for 38 long years. That's, that's almost four decades. He had become accustomed and comfortable in his dysfunction. The devil may have convinced you that it's never going to get any better. Your situation is never going to change. He's duped you into believing that wellness is not meant for you. He's whispered in your ear that wellness is for them folk with great faith. He's told you that your faith ain't big enough or strong enough. He's tricked you into believing that you're going to die with this infirmity. But Jesus, he came to destroy the works of the devil. You need to serve notice to the devil today and tell the devil he's a lie. Jesus said in Matthew 17, 20, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you can speak to the mountain and the mountain will remove his into yonder place and nothing shall be impossible for you. Yes, you may have to put some prayer and fasting with it because something go up but by prayer and fasting. And so Jesus, in our text today, in the latter part of chapter 4, had just healed the nobleman's son, the royal official son, that was at the point of death. He spoke the word to him, and his son was restored back to life. And in chapter 5, there was a feast of the Jews that Jesus went to Jerusalem. Listen to chapter 5. Now there was at Jerusalem by the sheep mark of the pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue, Bethesda, having five porches. In these porches lay a great multitude of impotent folk, blind, halt, withered, and waiting for the moving of the water. And an angel went down in a certain season and troubled the water, and whosoever was the first in the pool after the troubling of the water was made whole of whatever infirmity he had. Whatever disease he had, if he got in the water first, he'd be made whole. Hallelujah. Let me proclaim to you this morning, the water is troubled. I said the water is troubled. I said the water is troubled. The word of God is the water of life. And Jesus is the living water. Do you want 
to be made well. Here are, here, here are at least three qualifications for being made well. Number one, just exist. Simple as that. Just exist. Can I tell you that you qualify today? Just be alive. Just exist. God watches over his creation. Look at verse 5 and 6. He was a certain man. was nothing special about him. He didn't even call his name. But he qualified because he was just in existence. He was God's creation. He was, had been in front for 38 long years. When Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he said unto him, Will thou be made whole? And that's in the King James vernacular. Do you want to get well? What, what are you saying, preacher? Man, woman, boy, or girl. Just be alive. Just exist. And you qualify. There's nothing theological deep about it. Whoever you are, wherever you are, if you can have it, God can heal it. If there's a void in your life, God can fill it. He can fill it. He can fill it. And so all you have to do is just exist. If you can have it, God can heal it. If you are alive, and existing today, God is thinking of you. So number one, just exist. And then number two, have no excuses. We can learn what not to do from this man in the text. Jesus asked him if he wanted to be made well. And the man starts running off excuses. Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I'm coming, another step in before me. Jesus, I didn't ask you that. Jesus asked him, do you want to be made well? Rise, take up your bed, and walk. Let me just let me let me tell you this. This this is why we don't give excuses to the Lord. He has all power. He knows everything. He's everywhere at the same time. He's so powerful till he has assigned a name to all the stars. He calls the stars, all the billions of stars, he calls those stars by name. He had the hairs, all the hairs on our head numbered. He knows our down sitting. He knows our uprising. Not one sparrow falls to the ground without God knowing about it. He understands our thoughts are far off. And this is the same God that made man from the dust of the ground. Not dirt, but the residue of dirt, just dust. So then, there is nothing too hard for him. He specializes in things impossible. There is no thing that he could not do. Help somebody. I call this of the doctrine of eliminate excusism. Stop the excuses and trust God. If you want to be made well, just tell the Lord, Lord, I want to be made well. Tell him with enthusiasm, yes, I want to be made well. And the God that I serve has all power to heal any infirmity. And so, do you want to be made well? Number one, you qualify by just existing. Number two, 
have no excuses. And then number three, it's available every day. Look at verse nine. And immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. The Jews therefore said unto him that was cured, It is the Sabbath day. It is not lawful for thee to carry thy bed. Hallelujah. Can you, can you, can you believe that? Jesus has just performed a miracle. This man had been in farm for 38 long years. Jesus had mercy on him and grace on him in the midst of everybody. And they mean to tell me that it's a Sabbath day. You can't carry your bed. You can't heal on the Sabbath. These were the folk that were supposed to know God and had all the word of God. But they were hyper legalistic. They were hyper legalistic. And so it's available to you every day. God wants you well on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday and Saturday and Sunday. He wants you whole. He wants you well seven days a week. He watches over you 365 days a year, 24-7. Every day is a day that you can be healed in because the God we serve is still on the throne. He don't relinquish his throne for nobody. He's been sitting there throughout all eternity, eternity past and present. He's still the God that sits on the throne. And so this God wants you to be well. Do you want to be made well? That's a personal question. Maybe you are complacent and maybe you are comfortable in your predicament and you don't want to come out of it. You've been in so long. But for those of us that want to come out of it, it's available for you today. You can be made well today. Hallelujah. Thank you for tuning in. If you, by chance, have never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, the Bible says in Ezekiel 30, 33 and 11 that God has no pleasure in the death of the wicked. He says in 2 Peter that the Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness, but his long suffering, not willing in it to perish. God wants you well. He wants you saved today. You can come. Whosoever will, let him come. The Bible said, whosoever call the name of the Lord shall be saved. My brother, my sister, man, woman, boy, girl, you can be saved today. Eternity is facing all of us. And trust me when I tell you, you don't want to spend eternity separated from God. There's torment. There's judgment fire. You want to go to heaven to be with Jesus Christ throughout all eternity. He's gone to prepare a place for you. And if he's gone to prepare, he come again and receive him to myself himself, and that where he is, there you be also. It's as simple as acknowledging the Lord Jesus Christ, believing he died, and confessing him as Lord. The Bible says in Romans 10, 9, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believes the righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Amen. Give the Lord a hand where you are. Give him a hand to praise. Hallelujah. Well, as I close and go off the airways, I want to make you uh, aware of some giving opportunities. You can go to the Give Plus mobile app to uh, give your tithes and offering. You can go to the Facebook e-server papers link, or you can do it the traditional way. You can drop it in the United States Postal Service. But however you decide to do it, we appreciate and God appreciates you bringing seed into the storehouse that there may be meat in his house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, that's my time for the day. May the grace of God, the love of Jesus Christ, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit be with you wherever you go. 
both now, henceforth, and forever. Peace.